Well, hi everyone, and welcome to this week's online lecture, Foundations of Control. Now, control is one of those concepts in managerial terms where we need to have enough control, but not too much. So think about that person maybe you've worked with in the past or someone you can relate to who, who just doesn't do enough review or evaluation or monitoring of the situation. And sometimes you think you just wish they'd take control of the situation, not enough control. And in contrast, think of maybe that person you've worked with or maybe a teacher or family member or someone, someone that you've played sport with who just is a bit of a control freak, all right? So it's too much about, too much review, too much evaluation, too much monitoring. And control, just like power, has some negative connotations in, in the business context. So let's, when we look at control, think of those other terms that I just mentioned, like monitoring and evaluating and reviewing. Okay, up here, we've, we're going to look at a systems view of organizations. So we have inputs, and so if it's a manufacturing plant, this might be the raw materials, the plant and equipment that's ready and has the potential to do something. Then we have the processes, and this is the action, this is where people get involved, and we actually use the land and equipment and the building and all the raw materials are then processed and developed into something that we then can sell to market, like a chair or a table or a car or whatever it is. The same can be said about the service industry. So we have a, a number of inputs that convert to processes and there are outputs. In the service industry though, this is it's not, not so easily um, defined. So anyway, let's have a look firstly at this concept of control of inputs. Control of inputs. Uh, this is called, according to Robbins et al, feed forward control and it's all about anticipation in feed forward control we, we, we want to anticipate the system and what's going to happen in order to control monitor evaluate and review when it comes time for the processes we think about concurrent concurrent control measures or concurrent review or monitoring processes. And then finally at the outputs, probably the most popular or the most common thinking around control measures is feedback. This usually occurs at the output stage. We get some feedback, particularly from customers if it's a product that's being developed, or we get some feedback from a service that we've provided, like education or maybe um, transport. So thinking about transport, let's put an example here of a bus driver. So a bus driver needs to anticipate the traffic. They need to anticipate what levels of traffic will be likely at any period of time. So the peak hour morning traffic and the peak hour drive home traffic might mean that there be need some adjustments, need to take, take um, action and be, be controlling, in tr controlling their environment, aware of the environment, and then take measures to react to that information. As they're driving, they need to anticipate uh, the, the movements of the cars ahead of them, behind them, beside them, and so on. So feed forward control would have measures in that are, that are, an, are always anticipating. Keyword anticipation. So if we look at the next stage, concurrent control, here it's about direct supervision. So if we were wanting to implement some measures of control for the bus driver, then we would probably get his or her supervisor to sit in, maybe on the seat directly behind them or over on the, the other side of, of the bus, and to take some notes on their performance. Probably not going to talk to them during this process, but as the service is being delivered, as the process is underway, then direct supervision and maybe some intervention if something really goes awry, um, particularly if the bus driver is learning. 
Now, if we think about when we did our, um, when we go from L's to P's and we do our P's test, we're getting that direct supervision of our driving and we get control measures being implemented by the instructor or by the assessor and to determine whether we actually go from our learner's permit to our provisional permit. Similarly, while we're, while we're learning to drive, maybe some of you had some instruction where you had dual controls in the car and the instructor was able to then intervene at some stage in order to keep you and him or her safe. So concurrent control is that, that concept of direct supervision. And as I alluded to previously, probably the most common or the one that we think of the most is that um, feedback control. And this is where we request information. So very often we ask for employees for feedback. We ask for um, customers for their feedback, either on the service or on the quality of the product or the price and so on. And ideally, once we receive that feedback, that will then inform how we can improve the inputs, processes or outputs. So feedback obviously looks back over the system. Feed forward looks forward through the system and concurrent is in real time. Okay, uh, the second framework of control I'm going to look at this week is one that's got a lot of a lot of attention and has become a very important way in which we can assess, evaluate, monitor organizational performance. And it's called the balanced scorecard. It was developed by Kaplan and Norton. And the whole idea of the balanced scorecard was to take the relative emphasis away from what uh, prior to this framework seemed to be the primary way in which we evaluated performance in business. And that was through financial measures. So when we look at the financial performance of an organization, we can look at it in a whole range of different measures, ratios, different profitability. We can look at uh, uh, balance sheets and, and income statements. We, we can look at a number of sales on a daily or weekly basis. A, a seemingly endless amount of ways in which we can assess performance using financial reports. And that's important and that remains in the framework. But Kaplan and Norton suggest that there are other ways in which we can assess performance or in which we can control organization. And one of them is customer satisfaction. So yes, financial performance is important, but there are three non-financial measures that Kaplan and Norton alert us to when we're trying to measure or monitor performance or control situations in organizations. So customer satisfaction, and we can receive again feedback from customers at time of purchase, during the time of purchase, or even pre-purchase. We can gauge some, um, we, we can monitor or we can gather information we, we, from customers at their initial inquiry. We needn't wait until the purchase is made so that we can get all of those control measures such as feed forward, concurrent and feedback. Customer satisfaction, really important. Without customers, do we have a business after all? Okay, um, so customer satisfaction is the first of the non-financial measures of performance or control. And the second is are the internal processes. So this could be the extent to which our processes are able to communicate effectively to all of our stakeholders. It could be the extent to which our Facebook page is working, the extent to which um, our, our, our departments can, can interact with each other. Internal processes could also include relationships, how tasks are being achieved. 
So it's about the efficiency and the effectiveness of all of the processes. And it could mean that we need to undertake a review of our internal processes and get control of the situation and improve our efficiency by, by, by understanding how things are done and why they're done and how we can improve. It's really bringing into the organisation this philosophy of continuous improvement. It's no good resting where we are today. How can we improve and make it even better tomorrow? That's a little bit different to this idea of, well, let's not, let's not fix it if it ain't broken. Businesses can't afford to have that mindset these days. It's all about, well, let's take something that's really good and make it great. Let's take something that's great and make it excellent. Let's take something that's excellent and make it outstanding. Let's constantly monitor the environment. Let's constantly monitor the internal processes in order to make improvements. Okay, that's the second of our non-financial measures. And the third and the fourth in the framework um, is all about innovation. Innovation, we could say that's the operationalization of creativity. So it's about ideas, um, it's about how we learn. Learning and development is an important part of innovation. Now we can measure, therefore review and control, we can measure innovation in terms of the number of patents that we develop and, and, and secure our intellectual property, but it, it, it could be a whole range of different ways in which we can monitor and evaluate innovation. It could be new ideas that have then become part of better ways of doing our internal processes. It could be ideas that we've developed or gained from our customers that are going to help us to learn how to how to respond and increase customer satisfaction. Innovation could be the, the, the extent to which we not, not so much um, listen to the market for what they want, but create things that the market doesn't even realize that they want. And if we think about uh, all of the, the technological innovations over the, over the past few years, we didn't really know that we wanted some of the devices that we're now interacting with on a daily basis. It was only because someone, some organization, group of people were innovative enough and took a risk and invested into this technology and then provided it to us, to the market. And then the market responded by saying, well, yeah, this is, this is a really good, good idea. I, I, I like this, this new application. I like this mobile phone. You know, I remember when, when mobile phones weren't part of business. Now everyone has a mobile phone in, in business. It's just the way we do things. What, what is a new innovation, a new idea becomes a competitive advantage initially, but over time, as everyone adapts, then it's no longer a competitive advantage. Therefore, the need for more new ideas. So we could measure and control innovation in the number of new ideas generated, for example, the extent to which we learn. We can, we can measure and monitor qualifications received we, within, the, within the, the, the work teams. Whole range of different ways. We're gonna look at this framework in much more detail in the workshops and also look forward to seeing some of that discussion on discussion board. So foundations of control now wraps up our, our four functions of management. We've covered planning, organizing, leading, and now controlling. So we look forward to seeing you in the workshops and we look forward to seeing all that discussion on Blackboard.